CTW presents Square One TV, show number 168, produced at Unitel Video in New York. You might rightfully ask if you were a mind, and I'll tell you, we here at Mathematics R Us have provided our customers with a breakthrough, and this is it. I call it Smiling Algorithms Fraction Reducer. That's right. How many times have you been given a fraction and been told to reduce it? Plenty, I'll wager. Well, fret no more and take a look at this, for example. I have... 12 eighteenths. Now, 12 eighteenths is a hefty fraction to reduce, but with the all new Jim Dandy fraction reducer, all you have to do is plop that fraction into the fraction vat and turn on the switch. Always to be careful that you're not standing in a puddle of water whilst doing so. Shall we have a go at it? I say yes. <laughs> Whoa! Now this handy dandy fraction reducer shall reduce that fraction to its lowest terms. Let's see, I think it's about enough, huh? Let's see what we've got. Two thirds! How about that? Our Jim Dandy fraction reducer has reduced our original fraction of 12 eighteenths to two thirds! But. How do we know that two-thirds is equal to 12 eighteenths? Remember, when we reduce a fraction, we make the numerator and the denominator smaller, but we do not change the value of the fraction. Got that? The value of the fraction stays the same, even though the numerator and the denominator get smaller. But how do we check that? Well, step right over here and take a look at the math scales. No, 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 no. Math scales are not something mathematicians get when they think too much. These are math scales. Now, equal fractions balance, but unequal fractions don't balance. Getting the idea? I can see that one fourth is less than one half. Now, let's balance our fractions. 12 eighteenths and two thirds. And here we go. Hey, how about that? It works. 12 eighteenths and two thirds are equal. Now let's try another fraction. Whoa, how about this baby, huh? Is that a monster fraction or what? 561 over 935? Let's see if the machine can reduce it to its lowest possible terms. I'll plop her right in, flip the switch, and give her a whirl. Here we go, and I think that should be about enough. What do you say? All right. Voila! Three deaths, can that be? Can that monster of a fraction of 561 over 935 be reduced to a measly three-fifths? Well, let's put it on the math scale and find out. Voila. Ulu. 561 over 935. Three-fifths. How about that? 561 over 935 equals three-fifths. I love it when things work out. Buy your fraction reducer with optional mass scale today. And remember, we here at Mathematics R Us, we've got your number. <laughs> Man, you 
your mission is to eat only fractions equal to one third. When you encounter a number, you'll have until a count of three to make your decision. And beware the obstreperous Mr. Glitch. Wow, he will eat you if you are wrong. Yep. Math man, math man, math man, math man. Roll your... Mm, yep. One third. <laughs> I still got it. Math man, 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 math man. Oh, I do. That's one third. Where is no one? Right again. Math man, math man, one third, one third. Math man, math man, math man, math man, math man, math man. I don't know. Use your head. Nope. Oh, Math man, 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 math man. Oh. Oh, no. Math man, math man. Sloppy here from the Sloppy Kitchen with your sloppy, helpful kitchen hint for the day. So good. Do the people at your home drive you bonkers when cutting up their favorite piece of cake or dessert? I know mine do. Just take a look at this cake. Hmm, what a mess. Why can't people neatly cut off a piece from the corner? But no, they've got to cut out a piece from the middle, and you might not know at a glance exactly how much of the cake is left. So, do you know what we got to do, friends? Well, we might try counting. Let's do that. Let's see. One, two, three pieces of the cake have been eaten. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve are left. Hmm, let's see, three pieces plus 12 pieces for a total of 15 pieces. Therefore, we know that three fifteenths of this cake have been eaten. Oh, that's a lot of work for the busy, busy, busy cook to do. So we here of the Sloppy Kitchens have come up with this. The handy dandy cake press. That's right, now all your problems are solved. You can cook in the handy dandy cake press as well as store and serve by simply using this plunger and applying the slightest bit of pressure. You can reshape your cake and press it back, getting rid of all those unsightly cake holes. And here we go, friends. Press. Mm. So good. Now you can tell at a glance exactly how much of this cake has been eaten because it says so right at the bottom of the pan. See, one fifth. I know what you're saying. Before, he had figured that three fifteenths of the cake had been eaten, and now Poppy Sloppy is saying that one fifth of the cake has been eaten. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, not so, friends, because the handy dandy cake press has reorganized the cake, so one can tell at a glance that one fifth is exactly the same as three fifteenths. A must for every kitchen. <laughs> and if you order now, you will receive free of charge the handy dandy cake safe burglar alarm fits onto any cake or cover for total protection. That's right, if anyone gets near or tries to remove the cake cover, you will hear the burglar sound off like this. That's right, your cake is totally safe. Now let's turn it off. So this is Pop, let's turn it off. This is, how do we turn this thing off? This is Poppy Sloppy Spritz. How do we turn This is Poppy Sloppy saying bon appetit and happy cake pressing. This much of the show has gone by. That means there is this much to come. Let me show you something, if you're not too busy watching square one. Now, look at what I just finished. Big deal, you're probably thinking, right? Well, if you're so smart, let me see you do something. Make this design. I mean, you can use toothpicks if you want to. I just use sticks because they show up better. Make this design and move four of your sticks so that you have three squares all the same size and no sticks left over. Move four sticks and have three squares all the same size and no sticks left over. Here's a hint. Go for it. On back in my LCD, heading for the flash. 
Russian bar. Lowest common denominator. Putting some zip in my radiator. My numerator's up. Up, up. My denominator's down, down, down. There's action. <laughs> Then you'll own a joint There's three ways of saying The very same thing Common Like one half Decimal 0.50 percent 50 percent How heavy can you go? Go, 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 go Yeah, I'm rocking on down In my LCD Heading for the fraction bar I'm sipping my radiator, my numerator's up, 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 my denominator's down, get down, there's action, at the fraction, there's action, at the fraction, lots and lots of action, at the fraction bar, is everybody happy? Now it's time for one of America's newest game shows, but who's adding? And here is the host who loves numbers the most, Larry Cedar. How you doing, everybody? Good to see you out there in Edition Land. Welcome to But Who's Adding? And you here in the audience, welcome also. We have a very exciting game for you today. Let's bring up today's contestants and give them a big hand. Come on up. All right, we're ready to add today now. Playing for a blue side today is? Anthony. Anthony, how are you feeling today? Good. All right, you look ready to add, are you? Mm -hmm. Okay, and playing red today is? Jada. Jada, how are you? Fine. Good, you a little nervous? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I know, I'm nervous too. It's a very exciting game. Let's turn around and check out the rules. Now, the object of the game is to cover three squares in a row with your color, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Now, the numbers on the big board represent the sum you get when you add two numbers from the addin' board together. For example, if there's a ring on the four, and a ring on the five, what number can you cover? Nine. Nine, it looks just like that, right. Now, the player who goes first moves both rings and then announces his or her sum. After that, the next player moves his or her color ring anywhere on the addin' board and calls out their sum. Now, you got 10 seconds to move your ring and call out the sum for the board. If you don't do it in 10 seconds, you'll hear this. It means you ran out of time. Also, if you call out an incorrect sum or if you call out a sum that's already been covered on the board, that's a mistake and you'll hear this. So if you run out of time or you make a mistake, you'll lose your turn and your opponent gets to move both rings. First player to win two rounds wins the game. Red goes first. Are you guys ready? Yeah! All right. Yeah! And red, go. 12. 12, red. Ten blue. Five seconds. Eight red. Five seconds. Oh, sorry, you ran out of time. Jada, you get to move both rings. Red, go. Sixteen red. Sorry, you ran out of time there, Jada. You win round one. We'll take the two rings here. Anthony, you get to go first because you lost. And blue, go. Nine! Nine blue. Ten red. Five seconds. Fourteen blue. 
16 red. Eight blue. Five seconds. Five red. Five seconds. Seven blue. Tough game, all right. Let's have you turn around here. We have a winner. Jada, I gotta congratulate you on a very, very good game. Anthony, you did very well as well. It was a very, very tough game. Jada, for winning, we're gonna give you a Square One TV calculator. Congratulations to you. And Anthony, for playing so well in such a difficult game, we're gonna give you a Square One TV t-shirt. I hope you like that. And you guys have been a great audience. You really supported your team members here. And we'll see you next time on But Who's Adding? <laughs>
Good work, George. I think we know how our man got in. Kate, do you know much about the Despair Diamond? A little bit. It's got quite a history. Oh? It's called the Despair Diamond because for years and years its owners have had nothing but despair, sadness, and bad luck thrust upon them. Really? You mean like it's haunted? Something like that, I guess. Well, who's owned it in the past? Oh, lots of people over the years. Napoleon, Millard Fillmore, Marie Antoinette, Wiley Post. Who did Kane buy it from? The Chicago Cubs. Wow. It weighs 227.1 carats. Martha grows carrots. Not that kind of carrot, George. C-A-R-A-T. A carrot is a small unit of weight used in measuring precious gems. A carrot is equal to 200 milligrams. Well, to find out how many milligrams it weighs... You multiply the number of carrots by 200. That's... 45,000... 420 milligrams. There's a thousand milligrams in a gram. That's about 45 grams. But what does that mean? A nickel weighs about five grams, so it's about as heavy as nine nickels. That's not very heavy. It is for a diamond, and it's very valuable. What's that cloth? This? I found it in the hamburger at Kane's place in yesterday's episode. Thought I'd ask Debbie to run some tests on it, but I can't find her. May I see it? Ace. Ace? That's the name of my cleaner. Ace Cleaning. Maybe the thief has his clothes done there, too. This isn't clothing. It's like a heavy bag. Just for the heck of it. Are you looking up Ace in the phone book? Uh-huh. Ace Advertising, Ace Aerobics, Ace Action Bikes, Ace Achilles Tendon Repair, Ace Party Balloon Company, Ace Balloon Rental. Kate, I was thinking about how the robber got out of Kane's estate. Uh-huh. Remember the problem of the missing baseball when Mrs. McGregor's house was missing and I said, well, it couldn't have just flown away. Yes, but it did fly away. Ace Balloon Rental. Maybe the thief flew up, up and away in a beautiful balloon. That's brilliant. Let's roll. Well, hello, folks. I'm Amelia Airliver. What can I do for you? I'm Kate Monday. This is my partner, George. Frankly, MathNet. We're working on a burglary case, and we need some information about hot air balloons. You've come to the right place. I rent them, repair them, and sell them. I know balloons, ballooning, and balloonists. I've never heard balloon conjugated before. What do you need? First of all, is this from one of your rigs? Certainly looks like it. I'm pretty sure it is. Why? We found it at the scene of a burglary. Is this what a balloon is made out of? Oh, no. That's the heavy canvas bag the balloon is carried in. I see. We think our suspect made his escape in a hot air balloon. How much trouble is it to get one of them airborne? Oh, it's not difficult, if you know what you're doing. But you do need a bit of room, though, like a big field, for example. He had plenty of room. You could hold a balloon convention on his front yard. Well, see, you lay out the balloon, and then you make sure the load cables are straight. Then you fire up your propane burner. Propane burner? Yeah. The burner warms the air, and the fan blows the hot air into the balloon. That's how it's inflated. And then we set the gondola upright. How long does it take? Oh, it depends on the temperature, the size of the balloon. It's a little complicated. I guess you could say anywhere between a half an hour and an hour. Is it a noisy operation? I guess you could say it is. Why? The security guards would have heard that, George. Thanks, Amelia. Guess we figured wrong. Thank you. No problem. Thought 
thought sure we had him this time. All we had to do was find out who rented a balloon, look up his name and her records, and bingo, we had our man. We'll just have to keep plugging. There has to be a solution to this problem. What's that? It's a brochure on ballooning I got from Amelia. Kate. Kate? What? What if it wasn't a hot air balloon? We know it wasn't. What are you talking about? What if it was one of these? A helium-filled balloon. Why not? Call Amelia. Maybe the quieter. While George was getting more information about the balloons, I called Debbie and asked her to get specific weather records for the night of the robbery. Amelia said it could have been a helium balloon. She rents them, but hasn't rented one recently. She says they are quieter, but you'd need a lot more helium. Here's the weather report for that area, Kate. Any winds that night? Uh-huh. 10 miles an hour steady, gusting to 20. They could push a balloon pretty far. Which direction were the winds coming from? From the west. Amelia said a helium-filled balloon could travel for days if the pilot puts plenty of supplies on board. And if it were averaging 15 miles an hour? Let's say it's been up for three days. 24 hours a day, that's 72 hours. 72 hours at 15 miles per hour. 72 times 15, 1,080. The balloon could be more than 1,000 miles away. According to the scale on this map, 1,000 miles is about 14 inches. And you got to figure the wind direction changes so it could be anywhere within a very wide sector. We can alert the Air Force to keep an eye out for a runaway balloon. Mathmet, Monday. Yes, Amelia, think of something else? The police called, uh-huh. Yes. Yes, Amelia, that helps a great deal. Thank you. New information? Uh-huh. The police just found a balloon in Griffith Park. Abandoned. Oh, I knew there'd be something on this. There always is in plays like this. might just know how our man got into the Kane estate and how our man got out of the Kane estate. Yeah, if only we knew who our man is. 100% of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. This program was made possible by grants from the National Science Foundation, the U.S. Department of Education, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York. Corporate funding is provided by IBM, at IBM, we believe education is the key to the future. We are pleased to help support Square One TV as an innovative way to introduce young people to the exciting world of mathematics.